You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. I feel like who art Ed? I'm trying to spice it. Who art Ed? Mr. Wood, <laughs> art Ed, me. Yeah. Either way, it, it's ambiguous. It works on so many levels. I know. I thought it was a great start. Welcome to Who Arted, weekly art history for all ages. I'm your host, Kyle Wood. Before we get started on today's episode, just a bit of housekeeping. First off, I am happy to announce that once again, I'll be running my annual Arts Madness tournament starting this March. I will again post daily mini episodes for 64 days to give everyone a quick refresher on all the different artists and artworks in the tournament this year. To help all those high school students across the U.S. who are working hard to get college credit, I'm focusing on artworks from the AP Art History list. Now, I would, of course, love it if you could help me out by leaving a nice rating or review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening. And now, on with the actual topic for today's episode. Since this one's going to drop on Christmas Day, I thought it would only be appropriate to make a holiday-themed episode. So today... We're looking at Santa. As soon as I mention the name Santa Claus, most people envision the red suit, white beard, rosy cheeks, and rotund physique, but we all know the big guy only comes when we're asleep, so nobody's seen him in action. If nobody has seen Santa at work, how exactly did we all come to a consensus on what Santa looks like? There's a common myth that the image of Santa Claus originated in ad campaigns from Coca-Cola, but while they have had many successful holiday-themed ads featuring Santa, they were capitalizing on the image. They didn't invent it. The first images resembling how we picture Santa Claus actually date back to the American Civil War. In the bustling streets of 19th century New York, amid ink-stained presses and frenetic energy of the newsroom, Thomas Nast, a German-born American artist, rose from humble beginnings to become the preeminent political cartoonist of his time. However, it was his whimsical and heartwarming illustrations of Santa Claus that would cement his legacy as the father of the modern Santa. Thomas Nast was born September 27, 1840, in Landau, Germany. When he was six, he and his family embarked on a transatlantic journey, seeking the promise of the American dream. Settling in New York City, Nast found solace in his sketch pad. His pencil weaving tales of his immigrant experience and the ever-evolving American landscape. He loved art, but was less enthusiastic about school. He studied briefly at the National Academy of Art, but by the age of 15, he had dropped out of school to join the workforce. He found work as a reporting artist at Frank Leslie's Illustrated Newspaper. Then, in 1862, he began work for Harper's Weekly. He began making political cartoons, and the significance of his work cannot be overstated. The progressive Nast used his pen to rally the public in favor of the North during the Civil War. He pushed for civil rights, women's suffrage, and fair pay for the soldiers who preserved the Union. Harper's Weekly gave him a lot of leeway to put his ideas out there, and I would say that while he did hold some bigoted views common in his day, he was not particularly fond of the Irish, He mostly pushed his readers toward more progressive views, and a lot of people were reading his work. Lincoln called Nast the best recruiting lieutenant he had. President Grant would later say that he was elected because of, quote, the sword of Sheridan and the pencil of Nast. Nast is credited with making the elephant the symbol of the Republican Party. He created the personified image of Uncle Sam, And you may be wondering, what does all of this have to do with Santa? I think it's important to realize just how big and influential Thomas Nast was in his day to see why his illustration of Santa would become dominant. On January 3rd, 1863, Harper's Weekly ran an issue with two of Nast's illustrations as the centerfold. In the first illustration, Santa is visiting the Union soldiers, giving them Christmas presents. 
In the second, there are two circles showing a woman praying and a soldier leaning against a tree, showing the soldier and his loved ones separated during the war. In the negative space, Nast illustrated Santa coming down a chimney. These illustrations connected people's patriotism, their love of family, and the celebration of Christmas. An emotional connection can often be more persuasive and have a longer-lasting impact than dry facts and figures. That's why a campaign to end hunger doesn't simply list statistics about how many people go hungry. It shows the face of a specific child in need. Because when you get at the heart of an issue, when you make that emotional plea and that emotional connection, at a gut level, it just hits different. Nast's illustrations connected Santa with millions of people's core values. He got them at that gut level. It was the right illustration at just the right time, as the modern notion of Christmas was just starting to take root in society. And prior to the 19th century, Christmas was not really so family-friendly. During the Advent season, people had been expected to abstain from rich foods, meats, cheeses, and ale. After a month of restraint, many were set to let loose with rowdy celebrations lasting 12 days from Christmas to the Epiphany on January 6th. One custom included appointing a Lord of Misrule, who was in charge of keeping the party going. Traditions like caroling seem really just fun today, but as people went house to house, they often demanded food and drink. Sometimes caroling and the related tradition of mummering could turn violent, and many nobles would actually hire guards to protect their property during the 12 days of Christmas. Things started to shift as the Industrial Revolution brought about a rising middle class able to afford to buy relatively inexpensive mass-produced goods. Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol and Clement Clark Moore's 1823 poem A Visit from St. Nicholas, more commonly referred to by its first line, "'Twas the Night Before Christmas," helped to reframe Christmas as a peaceful celebration centered around family and friends. In 1863, Harper's Weekly was one of the most widely circulated periodicals in America. The nation was going on two years in a civil war that had torn families apart. Soldiers and their loved ones back home were making tremendous sacrifices every day. Thomas Nast's political cartoons rallied the troops urging them to keep the faith that their cause was noble. Soldiers missing the comfort of home found ways to mark the Christmas holiday. One Union soldier remembered, quote, In order to make it look as much as Christmas as possible, a small tree was stuck up in front of our tent, decked with hardtack and pork in lieu of cakes and oranges, etc., end quote. Even in the most bleak of circumstances, the pro-social instincts help people maintain their sanity and their humanity. Soldiers on the front lines found ways to be kind and generous toward one another by swapping coffee or newspapers. And as those soldiers opened Harper's Weekly, they saw Santa Claus standing with them, supporting their cause, and I imagine that was exactly what they needed that Christmas. After the war ended, I imagine a good number of those returning soldiers carried a soft spot for Nast's version of Santa, just as soldiers in other wars have been known to maintain a lifelong love of treats like Coca-Cola that they had received in care packages while deployed. Nast continued with his depictions of Santa for decades, often making his portraits of the big guy more personal and sentimental. He would use himself and his family as models for the illustrations, and I think that created a warmth that radiated through his depictions. And that's why the German-born Thomas Nast is known as the father of American cartoons and the father of the modern Santa. This concludes this week's episode of Who Arted, part of the Airwave Media Podcast Network. If you found this tolerable, please leave a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. You can find images of the work being discussed this week and every week on social media at Who Arted Podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And of course, on the website, whoartedpodcast.com. Podcast done.